Hello and welcome to Something for the Weekend, brought to you as always by Together 2012. You may be watching this show live as it's being recorded on a Friday between 3 and 4 p.m., in which case, if you'd like to watch with live captions, hop over to our website, together2012.org.uk. And thanks to global real-time captioning, live captions are being streamed as I speak. If you're watching the recording, you should just be able to click on CC at the bottom of the screen and you will get the captions up. So thanks today to Cheryl from Global Real-Time Captioning for that. I'm Ju Gosling, also known as Ju90. I'm a disabled artist and artistic director of Together 2012, who's bringing you this stream. With me, where she's been locked in, we've actually lost count now, but since last March 2020, that was just last year, wasn't it, is our chair, the artist, documenter and activist, Julie Newman. We're going to come back to East London in a minute for some further introductions, some audio descriptions and we'll tell you what we're dressing up to go out to stay in to do this week. But first, to the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa to the West Midlands. So we'll have some introduction and audio description and tell us a bit about what you're dressing up to go out to stay in to do. Okay, well, I think I should go first because it will probably take less time. <laughs> uh, so I'm Robin Surgeon, now Business Director at Together 2012. Yes, up here in Sutton Coalfield. And if you hear a lot of dripping going on, it is because the weather is unbelievably awful. And um, ditto in East London. So if you're watching this later and it's sunny, wish we nice. were here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, obviously, the global audience will be watching it in lots of hot places. Anyway, so um, as I say, I, I'm here in Sutton Coalfield in our studio space in front of our lovely theatre curtains. Uh, I am wearing a red baseball cap. Um, with a Rio Paralympics uh, symbol on the top of it. And this is actually, this is um, official GB20 Rio Paralympics merch um, that uh, Joshua acquired only this week. Um, and I'm now wearing it <laughs> this day. Uh, yeah, I, what would be the point in having children if you couldn't borrow their clothes and pants? That's all right, they borrow my money. Anyway, so... <laughs> uh, um, I have uh, blue eyes behind, no rimmed black armed glasses, uh, looking quite wintry pale on the skin front at the minute, but there you go. And I am wearing a black polo shirt or polo neck shirt. Um, and then on the left breast is a red, yellow and blue letters spelling W-H-Y for the word Y in a kind of light bulb shape. And it just says Y Festival on it which is uh part of what i'm doing at the weekend so do you want to tell us what you're dressed up to go out to stay and to do or do you want to come back to this under the week ahead which is coming up in the second half of the show and has our recommendations for things you can do from home online and offline in the week ahead mostly for free Oh, no, no, I will do it now because this is a very ethereal thing. This is, in fact, the um, Euro Disability Song Contest I am going to. So right, as a, to run parallel to the Eurovision Song Contest, I am running um, on through Y Festival a Eurovision Disability Song Writing and Performing Competition. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah. And full details will be up on our highlights and links page. Each week we publish the highlights and links on the website so anything we recommend and indeed any work we read out or pictures that we show you can find there later. Just go to the Together 2012 TV page, goes to the pull down menu or just click through from there. So Tracy, what are you dressed up to go out to stay and to do? Well, I think I should describe my outfit from the top really. I have got my homemade um, mini top hat on my head, which I've positioned on with a hairband. And then I've got my hair divided into two pigtails, which you can just about see, uh, with some purple and pink ribbons in. I've got a nice warm jumper, pink Chanel jumper. The Chanel's a type of wool, it's a thick, cuddly wool. 
uh, and then over that I have a well it's a leopard print rain mac which actually is become invalu invaluable it's not a special buy it was an asda's buy uh, and i love it and i i've got it tucked up but i can actually pull it right down and it covers the front of my legs as well as you know when you're out in the rain everything gets wet um and of course i have my homemade rain maker this is a bit of a clue to where i'm going do you want me to tell you where i'm going now or shall i tell you Please later? do tell us now okay I'm actually going to the Bromley uh, Disability Pride um, Festival, which is on this weekend, and really looking forward to it. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait to hear more about that. And I sh well, I'll add two things. Coming up later, we have joined in with Tracy, where we look at inclusive, accessible craft activities you can do from home. Future sessions will include Tracy's hat and Tracy's shaker. So we're looking forward to that. But we're all in hats today because it's the annual Hats for Headway Day. And Headway is a fantastic organisation for people who've experienced brain injury. And here in East London, we have the Headway Studio operated by Headway East. They have some fantastic artists. I think they probably have had quite a hard time in the last year because they haven't been able to get into the studio during lockdowns. And my best guess is that, like most charities, Headway have lost quite a bit of money through not being able to fundraise. So have a look at the Hats for Headway campaign. We're going to stick it up in highlights and links. And one of the things they encourage you to do is take a photograph of you in your hat and upload it to Instagram and Twitter with the hashtag hats for headway. So what kind of hat am I wearing? Not a hat that, yes, a hard one to describe. It looks a little bit like, I don't know, not exactly a turban. It, it's made to look, I think, as if it's been gathered up and wrapped around. Tracy, you're our style expert. What sort of hat am I wearing? Yeah, I'd say it was sort of turban-ish in its, in its design. Very yeah. 20s. Okay, Judy says it's very 20s. Anyway, mm. it's mm. Oh, yeah, of metallic. And with so, as with so much of my clothes, comes from the ASOS sale. And underneath that, I have a long-sleeved black sequined top from my, yes, my main fashion base, that good old charity shop staple. And I wore this in a video that I made almost 20 years ago called Opening Doors. And I was looking at the back of my wardrobe and discovered it along with a black T-shirt that has the sort of laser shiny spider in the middle of a web on it which I think I dug out from a bag that I'd put away probably about 2002 so don't take any notice of these people that tell you to throw things away if you've not worn them for a year what nonsense so <laughs> apart from that I've got light olive skin green eyes behind black plastic glasses black wrist braces and silver colored jewelry and for once I've also got some eye makeup on because Julie and I are dressed up to go out to stay in to Eurovision. In fact, we're dressed up to go out to perform in Ooh. Eurovision. And Eurovision this year is being hosted by the wonderful Nikki Tutorials, who for anybody who is interested in makeup or indeed, as I have done recently, thanks to Tracy's recommendation, got into the Glow Up series on BBC mm. iPlayer. So, yes, we're a tribute to Eurovision, a tribute to Nikki Tutorials. And behind us, I'll introduce you later to our teddy bear who will be competing for the Clockwork Paralympics medal wearing in our, the second half of our show. But Julie... What do you what do you look like as you're dressed up to go out to stay in to perform at Eurovision? I think I might look like an aging clubber, very aging clubber, sort of like going back. I'm, I'm I think I'm referencing probably the eighties, if I can remember that. Yes, I think it's probably the eighties. I think Eurovision was stuck in the eighties though, so I that doesn't true. really matter, does it? I don't know if that's <laughs> true. I'm wearing a little silver um baseball cap which i borrowed from Jew, so it's, it's, it looks slightly odd on me um i've got long flowing locks which for my 
for my gig on, on Eurovision, I'll have a wind machine and it'll flow behind me, um, uh, you know, a la sort of singer. Um, I have adornments on my wrists, um, some silver, some black, some rainbow colored. And I have a, a lovely, lovely best world type favorite little um, sort of jet uh is it a tortoise or I can't see from here? Um, I think it's a whale. Yes, yeah, my whale. I got that in Tobago uh, many, many years ago, and I, I just adore it. It makes me think of the beaches. But I shall be singing. I, I shall be um, paying tribute to the cats with a meow meow song. <laughs> you know the ones. They go meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so I'm sure it'll be met rapturously um, by, by, the, uh, by the gathered hundreds and millions and speaking of meow meows as always some of the five rescue cats currently living here are circling so if you're interested yes if you're more interested in the pets than us then on the same pull down menu as highlights and links you will be, find a page on animal hosts i forgot to mention i've got a white t-shirt with plate paint splashed not paint splashed but paint paint splashed on the shoulders take and it indeed. away from me now please do before <laughs> i tangle myself up anymore and judy has wonderful glit take your glasses off for a second too so we can look at that wonderful I've got carnival spots glitter. before my eyes <laughs> yes judy's also got her eurovision glitter on but you'll be pleased to know that it's time to move on but we'll have all of those things up on the website later the highlights and links page is up by about six o'clock on friday night and remains online so now we're going to move on and look at some of the poems that have been written this week at together's pop-up poetry club and the together 2012 pop-up poetry club meets every wednesday from 10 30 to 12 and it's a phone-based group. We phone you, we pay for the calls, so you don't need digital access if you want to pass that message on to anybody who doesn't have digital access to be able to watch this show. It's a great group. It's led by Alison March and our club's programme leader. It's facilitated by our engagement support worker, Noel Guinan. So anybody who has any concerns about the technology or indeed needs a volunteer because they need to dictate their poems, then just let Noel know. You can contact us and find out far more by either following the link from the highlights and links page or just dropping us a line info at together2012.org.uk. And each week the group writes on a theme and this week's theme was birds. And I think if we go over to the West Midlands, do you want to start with one of the poems, Robin, or indeed Tracy? Um, I will start today. Uh, so um, one of our regular poets and artists indeed, um, Dwayne Bryan, um, he sent us a couple, but I've selected uh, my, my favourite of the two. And this is called My Pigeon. Do you want to fly? I want to fly. Birds want to fly like humans. We both fly high in the sky. When we're in the air, we might feel a little afraid. But when we reach our destiny, we feel made. We fly over land and sea and sky. But we always feel high. We'll feel free and powerful. That's why we fly. Oh, thank you, Dwayne. And special thoughts to everybody who's not been able to fly away to visit family and friends as they usually would have been able to. So I have this one from Crystal PZ and it's called Bird. The birds are many different colours. Every bird flies up to the trees and they sing in the trees. Every bird has their own feelings. The birds sing different sounds and the birds also make their own nests. And the birds make their nests from natural materials such as grass leaves and mud. Birds keep their babies in their nests. Thank you, Crystal. Tracy, do you have one for us? I do. I've got one uh, by Dawn Barber. And actually, I read this earlier and it just it, it just conjured up a beautiful image for me. So I'll read it to you. It's called The Robin. 
Hello, little Robin, sitting on your sitting on my tree. Thank you for coming to see me. Days are better when you're here. Sorry, days are better when you're here. You sit all cute and fluffy. You seem to know when I feel sad. You give me a lovely whistle that brightens my day in every way. When you sip your water from the bird bath, it is a dream come true. Hello, little Robin. I do love you. Oh, thank you, Dawn. And I'm sad to say that Dawn's one of the people without digital access and therefore can't hear her poems being read, but we'll certainly feed that back. Do you have one from Glory, Robin? I do indeed. So this is Glory Sengo, who's another of our regulars. Yep, and this, this piece is entitled White Bird. When I saw the white bird in the street, I went to another pavement and turned right and went straight to the zebra crossing. I went to the church to pray. Thank yeah. you for that, Glory. That's, yeah, that conjures up all sorts of things, doesn't it? Because I yeah. don't understand from it whether the white bird sent Glory to church mm. or not. But yes, that, that sort of sense of birds being messengers. Well, messages, yeah. but also yeah. kind of not necessarily positive because, you know, Tracy came up with that sort of lovely poem from Dawn, but actually mm -hmm. there's other sides to birds as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they do at the club is talk about the themes. If you want to join in from home, then next week's theme is clouds. So we'd love to see your poems if that, you know, if you write them. But in the meantime, I think finally, Julie, you've got one. I do. Um I'll say a couple of sentences after it, if I may. It's called The Magpie. This morning I heard a magpie shout, raucous and loud, chattering in rhythms of eight, and thought of my mother. Her eyes narrowed as she looked about, seeking the solitary bird, checking none others were hiding, spying it out, as she searched for the source of troubles untold but about to unfold on her unsuspecting family. It's like you were saying about some things can be quite dark, can't they? My mum, uh, you know, sort of was a very sensible, very sophisticated and, and very classy lady in her later, later years. But she carried this superstition about solitary magpies right up until the day she died, and she was very suspicious of them. I would start a phone call with her, and she'd say, I saw a magpie today. <laughs> you think, oh, well, there's nothing really I can say except, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tra Tracy's brother, still now, he, mm. whenever he sees a magpie on its own, he has to salute it. Mm. Good morning, Mr. Magpie. How's your yeah. wife? Yeah. <laughs> You guys obviously need to have a separate conversation. But I would ask you to explain for the rest of us, but it's time to move on. And on a Friday morning, we have the Together 2012 Art Club with a still life session on Zoom between 11 and 12. What happens is that Alison Marchin, the international artist who's our club's programme leader, sets up a still life and then she screen shares it on Zoom. but Depending on your device, we can also text you and email you the image if that's easier to have it directly. And then we audio describe the image, people really focus on it. And then inevitably, you know, it, we do what it says, you know, people make a still life and show each other at the end and, you know, get a bit of feedback as they go. One of the reasons we chose still life is you can do that with whatever you've got at home, whether it's pencils, crayons, felt paints, felt tips, pastels, you know, it's all very easy to do a still life with. So this is this week's image, and I'm actually going to get Robin to audio describe it because he's much better at it than I. Okay. Now, so what we have um, is um, it's, it's a sort of hang hanging decoration, I, I think. Uh, it, it's a, a, a circle of daisy looking flowers very kind of like like large daisies with with many many very small white petals and then a kind of yellowy middle um and there's one of the nine i think flowers around the outside and then three in the middle so it's it's, it's a complete sort of uh 
circle um and and it, they're mounted on actually what looks like um a, a sort of hair bobble actually like a hair elastic so it could be um you know uh something that could be worn on the re wrist something like that perhaps um and the, and the band is in gold with a white background behind it yeah i think one disadvantage we've got is we we really should try and get along to the friday morning session and find out for ourselves the full audio description so just clicking through I think this one is Dwayne Bryan's, and we've just heard Dwayne's poem about the pigeon. And this is Lee Brooker's. Both of them have mostly used pencil and coloured pencil or crayon. And then this is Sophia's, who's used reds and pinks to colour it in and black for the handle. So well done, everybody. I think that's a very mindful image actually, and looking at the drawings, looking at the response from the participants, I think it's a very mindful response. Yes, and I think mindfulness is something that we've deliberately introduced into that Friday session, partly because it's Friday, partly because it really, you know, it's nobody thought 18 months ago we would be doing still life art clubs over Zoom. None of us even knew what Zoom was. And many of our club's participants had never really been online. So it's all a big change. And I think mindfulness really helps for the focus. And like I say, they're able to get to grips with the audio description in a sort of really meaningful way as well. Because not all of the people attending the club, you know, have got great sight. But also people are having to use things like phones to access the image. So we're going to move on. I said we're going to move on, but we're also going to step back to last Tuesday when the art club runs a make and natter session. And that's a very different session. It's a much more sociable session. Although we do encourage people to get to know each other as creative human beings. So we don't talk about our outside problems, but we do like to get to know what colours do people like? What art forms do people like? You know, what's their favourite things that they do? And so on and so forth. The Make and Natter group, Alison leads an activity each week that's based on recycling materials you already have at home. But you're also very welcome to bring your own creative projects projects, whether that's wall-based, modelling, any kind of making project, bring it along, join in, show other people, get a bit of feedback, give other people some ideas. And this is based on an idea that Tracy introduced us to back in February as part of Join In With Tracy. And she found this image on the internet that I'm going to put up first. And do you want to just tell us what this is, Tracy? Yeah, this is another one of those recycling um, art that, you know, that we're really enjoying doing at the moment. And actually, it's a collection of animals made out of your old toilet roll, you know, the cardboard inside the toilet roll. And literally, they've been painted, pinched together at the top to create little ears. And then you can deck the front um, to create whichever animal you like. On the picture we're looking at, I think it's a pair of little foxes um, at the front because they've got nice big tails. And I think we've got a few owls at the back. Um, so yeah, they're really, I really like the picture. Yes, it, I just think it's so clever because all you're really doing is taking the toilet roll in inner. And I think you could also do this in a sort of bigger sense with you know what kitchen roll. yeah kitchen, kitchen roll, roll or cut a yeah. roll in half to do too and yeah it's literally pinching the top together and painting or decorating it you could use stickers you could use anything so let's have a look at what the art club have been doing with it <laughs> and this is an owl that's been made by a crystal peasy we're just seeing it photographed sitting on the kitchen worktop and I think Crystal's covered that with blue paper and then she's used double-sided paper to cut out the wings and the eyes. So that works really well, Crystal. And I think there's another one from Crystal coming up. Ah, oh, I think we'll go back to that one. But this is Sophia making hers with the help of her support worker. And 
I think they've copied some of those that some of the ones on that picture really well because there's really they've cut out hearts for the faces mm. and then done really nice eyelashes around the eyes. And at that point, I think they're just putting on. Yeah, I think those are the little tails in yellow. And these are two more that they've made. So this time round, they've made the tails in pink and they've actually used an extra piece of fabric, or yeah, extra piece of white paper to make the, um, the end of the fox's tail. So that's fantastic. Mm. Then this is Glory Sengo. He's made one out of pinkish purpley paper and then decorated it in blue. And then this is Crystal Pease's other one. So she's done an owl again in orange. So that's all really, really effective. It's really simple and you can be as creative as you want, you know, with little whiskers or sticky up ears. It's Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, it is absolute most basic. You know, if you haven't got much fine motor control, then just literally painting it and sticking on some Google eyes. Yeah. And I think last week and all of this you can find not only on the past highlights and links sections, but also on our join in from home, join in with Tracy page. There's so many ideas that you can do with it, aren't there? And it is just mm. really, really basic. Everybody needs a loo roll. Yeah, exactly. And I think at the moment everybody's still bulk ordering loo roll and has bulk orders for the inners. And of course, there's nothing to stop you unrolling them or cutting them up. So you don't have to have extra pieces of paper to be able to put tails and paws and everything else on. You know, just take another loo roll and um, use a bit of glue. We might even pop that link in to the flour and paste glue recipe for anybody who, like us, is still unable to go out and doesn't have any glue in the house. So we've got one more join in from home activity before we move on again. And that is our regular join in with Stara. Last week's show got eaten by be live and as a result the profile of stara which we showed in the second half of the program never made it to youtube but you can see it on our highlights and links page from last week it's a really interesting profile so if you want to know more about stara's work as an actor and a poet then check out that video it's also on the act up newham youtube channel and if you subscribe to the together 2012 cic and act up newham youtube channels you'll get notified about all of the new videos as they come up so stara this week is going to show us how she picked flowers and dried them and then created an image which because of course she's also shielding she was able to upload to moon pig and have delivered as a digital card hi hi i'm stara and this is Moo. Mallow. The dog is sleeping. I picked flowers and Ooh. I put them in a Ooh. book. I waited and waited and waited. Then I Ooh. opened the Ooh. book and I made a card to send to my friend. Happy. And your friend was happy? Yeah. Bye. Bye.
So that was great. And I think one of the things I particularly appreciated was the fact that it was buttercups and daisies and dandelions. You do not have to have access to a garden or risk being prosecuted by the park authorities by getting real flowers. And it was still incredibly effective. And of course, you can use that pressed flower technique on just about anything in terms of rows, can't you? I think it's best, is it not, if you put it in something like kitchen towel or toilet paper and then put it in the book? Yeah, I think it's good to blot it so that sort of any natural juices sort of from the from the flowers themselves can be absorbed. Uh, but it does, by pressing it like that, it keeps the original colour. Isn't that right, Tracy? Yeah, it, it does. In fact, I was um, pressing flowers myself recently, so that was uh, quite fortuitous. But yeah, did you, very nice. What, what did you use? I mean, not everybody's got piles of books at home. And of course, you know, many of us, including half our own team, aren't in their own homes. What did you yeah. put yours with? Um, it was a, it was cookery books, to be honest, because we do have quite a few cookery books and they are heavy. But anything, any, as long as the flowers are protected by some kitchen roll, then you can use almost anything that's got some weight to it. So... <laughs> You could put it yeah, under trainers. A, sorry, you could put it under a um a, a, a seat cushion in a in a um sorry, I've lost my words. On a settee or in a chair. Though if, if you've got a chair that has a cushion and you're sitting on it regularly. Mm. Yeah, I think then you yeah. still need to make sure it was in something solid like oh, a yeah. book first, oh, otherwise no, it no. would get bent, wouldn't no, it? No, I think it would be all right. If you get like a magazine or one of those things that Tracy talks about that you get through the door, put some put some paper in it, fold it inside it so that it's held in position, and then put it underneath either your wheelchair cushion, your seat cushion, or your sofa cushion. I yeah. think next time I get the dust buster out and take the sofa cushions <laughs> off, I should expect to find. You're wondering why your hay fever is going through the roof. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's definitely going to be yes I, I do think if 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 like me you've already had swollen eyes from allergies for the last couple of months then um yes perhaps <laughs> yeah i think that's a really good tip robin definitely time to move on to our clockwork paralympics we've been running the clockwork paralympics weekly since march 2020 and it's always pretty much the same we erase clockwork toys. Who knew how hard it was to get two clockwork toys even to go in the same direction? But we erase clockwork toys each week. And whoever wins has the ability to put, a, well, whoever wins has the right to put a medal on their teddy bear for the next week. And before you think we're too old for teddies, well, of course we're not anyway, but we've also since last March been supporting the virtual bear hunt, which it's really kind of something been going on for years, I believe, ever since the success of Michael Rosen's Bear Hunt book. But it's about putting teddy bears in your window or since lockdown and COVID onto live streams so that young people can hunt for those teddy bears. And I always think with the actual Paralympics and Olympics, you've got these people come along with cushions and then they give the medal to the actual athlete but in our case the teddy bears act as the medal bearers and they get to wear the medals so my teddy is yet again for the third week running because she still doesn't have a medal apart from the fact that she's got her own and this is tanny newly arrived in the east london studios as a birthday present and tanny is a sort of soft golden bear with a blue top a red sweatband a medal around her neck in felt that says a winner in gold embroidery. And somebody has also made her own medal that says Together 2012 in yellow ribbon. So who is competing on behalf of Birmingham 2022? Well, we have, we have a returning athlete looking to uh, retain their medal. However, after last week's success, um, there's been some sponsorship contract issues. And so for this week, he's going to be known as Sign Bear. OK, so moving swiftly on again, oh. the, we're, <laughs> we're currently racing clockwork crabs in the bath. It's a walk-in bath, but 
I know we've had some objections about the very high sides they might have to climb out of, Robin. Don't worry, I help them out against afterwards. I don't want to be wasting water. If you'd like to join in at home, all you've got to do is choose the right side or the left side of the screen before the race starts. Robin, what's your choice this week? Uh, this week we're going to go right, right side of the screen. Right. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to pop this video on and you'll be able to tell from Robin's reaction, stroke, audio description, who's won. Oh, here we go. Obviously, I'm looking for form as they race down the pool, looking as a swimming coach, ready to see how good their strokes actually are. So here we go. Wow, off to a flying start there by London. Oh, but they got caught halfway down and Birmingham have yet again, well, well, retained the medal. Mm -hmm. So we are we're sticking with our um because we don't like to brag too much about how many medals. So we are going, we are sticking with the Newham medal that we have here, um, to show how much we uh all at all ends of the together. Um so far we appreciate what happened in London in twenty twelve and all the ongoing stuff. So congratulations to Sign Bear. Congratulations, Sign <laughs> 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 Julie's very, very pleased, and of course, none of us take it all that seriously. Of course. Well, for for those of you who need audio description, Julie was grimacing at their loss. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. So fortunately, it's time to move on again and look at what's coming up in the week ahead. And first, I'm going to go back to hear more about Disability Pride, which is happening this weekend in Bromley, but also online. It is. And although I have got my, uh, my waterproof on, I will be watching online, but I want, the, I want to feel the atmosphere. So, yeah, it's taking place this weekend, uh, Saturday the 22nd, from 1.30 to 3.30. Now, I'm quite excited about this because um, it hasn't happened for a couple of years with, with COVID. So, it's, I'm quite pleased that it is actually going online. Um, it's got some great people performing there. Um, there's uh, Lawrence Clark, who's a stand-up comedian who's hilarious. Um, so looking forward to seeing him. Um, and really good um, James... Jamie Hale. Jamie Hale. Jamie Hale, yeah. I mean, he's just absolutely brilliant. He's a writer, um, become writer, musician. You, know, you name it, he's tried it. He's been there, he's done it. He's on so many, you know, he's, he's just around a lot. So I'd be really interested to see what he's what he's going to do. He does some podcasts and stuff as well. Really interesting to listen to. Um, of course, and they've got the uh, Magpie Dance Company will be um, performing for us as well. So I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, I think it is absolutely unmissable and one of the first disability arts events of the summer, I think. Mm -hmm. Julie, what would you like to recommend for us first? Eurovision. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> I found some links to the Eurovision website and also the BBC uh, website that features the Eurovision Song Contest. That starts at eight o'clock tomorrow night on BBC Actually One, I think. Um, and it goes on to about oh, quite late. <laughs> it goes on and on. It, it goes does. on. <laughs> it goes on until about 11.45, I think, by the time they get all the results. And it, it's it, gripping it. and very exciting. And lots of glitter, lots of fun, lots of singing, lots of outrageous outfits. So <laughs> I think the nicest thing about Eurovision is it's always been a party that everybody can join in from home. It's become very special to the LGBTQI plus community. And my guess is that where bars and clubs are allowed to open in part, there's going to be Eurovision parties. I looking back on last year they had well, they didn't have Eurovision, but they had a Eurovision night instead with lots of videos and celebrations. It was actually really special. 
And I think it was probably the best Eurovision I've ever seen, even though there were no new songs, because it just had so much meaning with people coming together, not knowing what the future was going to hold. So it's a jolly good free party. And even if you're partying on your own, there's loads of opportunity to connect on social media with other people who are at Eurovision partying at home as well. Robin, I'm assuming you're not going to be watching Eurovision, judging by some of your expressions, but what would you recommend for the week ahead? You never know. I, I enjoy the very fair voting system, if nothing else. Um, so I, I've got a couple, but let's go to the first one. Um, first one is a uh, short, filmy play. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Basically, it's called Peter the Wild Boy. Um, the the, it's, it, the the tickets it's ten it is ten pounds to to watch it's on on the twenty fourth so that's Monday so that's two and is it two o'clock and seven o'clock on Monday um if you need to know a little bit more the link takes you to Invent Bright Event Bright but it's also on Disability Arts Online but if essentially it tells the story of um a young man uh who has uh who is has a learning disability um and how he actually forges his way through life from being someone almost um uh what's the, feral and living in a forest to ending up um in in the positions of authority and in in the courts of germany um and and it's yeah it's it's kind of like a series of stills and bits of films and and live dialogue and stuff all brought together um, and so being the arts professional I am, I've no idea what you call that. Um, <laughs> um, but, I, but there is a piece so I've watched, you know, there is like a, a, a show reel bit for it, kind of showing all the bits. It just looks like a really good story. And and again, it's, it's you know, it's something, it's, it's real artists, real disabled artists, and it's using the, the, the voices of people who have had the experiences or similar experiences in, in, today's times and how it kind of reflects across like historically it hasn't changed that much it sounds absolutely great and of course it is really important that artists are paid we are so lucky that thanks to arts council england and the national lottery community fund we can offer all of our activities for free and still pay our artists which is really I'll important i'll just add on that it, it's it's 10 pounds per device so if you can get 100 people around your screen it's 10p each. Yeah, this is where I feel like it's just rubbing salt into the wounds <laughs> who are on their own. I'm going to recommend something that happens, well, I say tonight, it depends whether you're watching this show live or recorded, but this is the launch of a report that is still going to be available online afterwards. The Sisters of Frida are a really fantastic group of disabled women who have been around most of the 21st century raising awareness about issues that affect disabled women and not least intersectional issues, including issues that affect women of colour. So they're re launching this research about the impact of COVID-19 on disabled women tonight from 6.30 to 8. If you go to their website, which is SIS of Frida, S-I-S-O-F-R-I-D-A. So in fact, it's SIS O Frida then you can get the booking details off that as well. But do look out for that research. It's going to be really important. Our lives as disabled women through COVID-19 have been all but invisible. And it's great that the Sisters of Frida are making them visible. Julie, what else did you want to recommend? I, I, I'm still exploring some of the museums and libraries that I haven't ever had a chance to really look at properly because of access problems you know it's difficult to get into central London um, and it's the London ones I've been concentrating on at the moment I've come across a British library website which has got a whole section of online exhibitions and online resources it's massive which is I suppose unsurprising it's not as wide as I would have hoped for given the amount of money that the there is or was in the British Library. But there's two sections that I'm quite interested in. One is the old maps, because I think you learn a lot about social history through looking at old maps and what it doesn't tell you. 
Um, and the other is uh, paintings from the collection of King George III. Now, I think that will be fascinating given his his health problems and his well-known mental health problems, as, as they were ascribed, from Porphyria. And I just want to see what he collected and, and think about why he collected those pieces, why why they appeal to him. Well, that's great. And one of the things we're hoping to do with Together 2012 Art Club is start doing some of these virtual tours together. So if you find them difficult to navigate or you would like to do a tour when and just chat to other people at the same time about what you're seeing, drop us a line. The details are at the bottom of the screen, but it's info at together2012.org.uk. Do you have one last one for Tracy? Um, I think just to remind people, um, quickly just two actually, just to remind people that not to miss the uh, final of All That Glitters because that's uh, that's this week as well, next week as well. So follow that through your jewellery making. Um, and then it's one I flagged up last week about um, the podcast talk with um, Michael Rosen and Philip Pullman. Yeah, I think it's... yeah, I think that ha that's actually uh, this weekend as well. <clears throat> and I see that, me say it on uh, that. And I see that there's a Michael Rosen podcast also taking place next month as part of New and Word Festival. So we're going to tell you much more about New and Word Festival in June, including what we're going to be doing for it. Is there? Anything else that anybody wants to tell me at the last? Yeah, yeah, just a quick one. Um, I always like to recommend too. Uh, and this one is actually going back to the to podcasts on the BBC iPlayer. Um, there's a really fascinating series. Um, I only heard about it this week. Actually, it came out in 2019. But it's called 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter. And, and it's a series of 15-minute of podcasts. 13 minute podcast that basically take a um something from the natural world an animal from you know our natural world that's been investigated to how they do what they do to then enhance human um capabilities so for example the very first one uh episode looks at um kingfishers and how kingfishers enter water and don't lose speed and stuff was used to redesign the J Japanese bullet train. Um, and, and another one uh, about, I think relevant at the moment is how um, using mosquitoes and what mosquitoes stab us with, and we never know it's been happening until we, we swell up. Um, but actually using kind of, uh, yeah, a mosquito lance um, technology into looking at hypodermic needles to make injections in humans less painful and then there's a whole host of other things to go with that yeah that does sound fascinating and also the kind of thing that's quite good to listen to while you're doing something else so that's it for this week we will be back again of course next week thanks as i said earlier to arts council england national lottery community fund and a whole host of other people, including our co-hosts, Stara Plurger, and of course, Global Real-Time Captioning. What do we want to flag up for next week in terms of Together 2012? As well as we've got the Art Club, which we've already talked to you about on Tuesday and Friday. We have pop-up poetry on Wednesday. On Monday, we have Dance on Screen Club, which I lead. And fortunately, we were already making dance for the screen before COVID came along. So it's not been a huge shift. Everybody is welcome to our clubs, any disabled person, anybody you want to have with you. We don't ask for any proof of disability. We don't talk about our impairments, only our access needs. You're very, very welcome to join us. You don't have to have participated in the arts before or been trained, but we believe that everybody has got something to teach and everybody's got something to learn. So we all come together and do just that. As we say on our website, together we are strong, together we can change our world. So Robin, would you like to introduce the last item? Yeah, so we've got a, a short film now, um, basically introducing uh, 
Jessica Tanya Bishop. Um, I think the easiest thing is to say is Jess is a theatre arts professional and let the spe film speak for itself. See yeah. you next week. I can't wait to watch it. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. See you next week. So this afternoon, uh, we're going to be listening to a conversation with Jess Tanya Bishop. So first thing, Jess, is please introduce yourself to uh, the Together audience. Okay, so as you know, my name's Jess. Um, I have graduated from Worcester Uni with a degree in drama and performance. Um, and I work a lot in the creative industry, running a youth theatre, um, I'm involved in community theatre as well. Um, but I also, I don't just do performance, I, I do backstage stuff, um, I do lighting and tech, um, and I've just got the generic office job as a normal person, but that's it really. <laughs> Fabulous. So um, you say you went to Worcester Uni, um, can you tell us a little bit more about, about kind of why you chose maybe Worcester, why you chose the course that you did um, and, and how that kind of reflects into what you do now? Um, well, I chose Worcester uh, because it's really close to home. Um, so when I had like hospital appointments or doctor's appointments, it was easy just to travel back. Um, but I chose the course uh, because I was, always, I was quite a shy person. I uh, I struggled, I didn't really like talking to people much, um, but when you're on stage, it, you haven't got to be yourself, so it, you haven't got to be worried and it brings you out of your shell, so you learn like life skills of communicating more and not being worried talking to people, so yeah, and um, so that relates because obviously I looked at different courses, so theatre and education, theatre for young audiences, so that's really helped. Um, going into doing a youth theatre and understanding how you need to talk to them differently than you would with adults. Okay, so um, I mean, interesting point there. You said that you're actually quite a shy person, and <laughs> yet you are doing a drama course and a performance-based kind of work. Yeah. Um, you know, hobby work, whichever, however it rolls out, really. Um, yeah. And sort of said, you know, so you don't have to be yourself when you're on stage. Yeah. As a as a disabled woman, mm -hmm. um, how much do you think that that is a part of all of your life? Um, well, I think it is really um, because you always put on a front. Oh, well, I do. Um, I don't really tell people. Um, about my back, so obviously I've, I had scoliosis um, and I had the surgery for it, but I've still got a slight curvature. Um, but if I don't have to tell people about it, then I then I won't. Um, so again, it's almost like putting on that front and you know, if you're in pain or something, you, you hide it. And it doesn't matter if you know the person or if you don't know the person. Um, so again, being on stage, you hide who you are and become a completely different person. And then sort of following on from that, what was your your living experience, I guess, really, of, of university? I mean, I did you stay um, at home? Did you live in halls at all? Uh, no, I stayed at home. Um, it wasn't too far to commute. It was only about 20 minutes. Um, which in a way I kind of do regret because I think if you live in halls, um, you make that bond with people easier. Um, and if you haven't got that, obviously it's, it's a bit more harder and challenging. And do you feel that your uh, impairment had any sort of an impact on how well you were able to access the course or, um, the, the response of the university uh, to you as an individual? Um, to be honest, I think the response was really good. Um, we had to do a, a piece of physical theatre, which obviously I really struggled with um, not having the flexibility. Um, but they understood it. They didn't have to question me too much or anything. They just accepted what I could and couldn't do themselves. Um, and obviously, 
you know, if people don't know your impairment, then they don't quite understand how to take you in that respect. Um, but I think sometimes they may forget. So when we used to have to go on trips to say London and you're doing all that working, walking, sorry, and all that traveling, um, it does kind of take its toll on the body. Oh, absolutely. Um, so you've graduated. Um, mm -hmm. Have you have you been able to move into kind of drama and or, or theatre work professionally? Um, I haven't done it professionally at the moment, unfortunately. Um, it's just been more uh, community. So I do. Uh, I think the most recent one I did was a Shakespeare play at the Rose Theatre in Kidderminster. Um, I do a pantomime every year that raises money for charity that we give away. So I think, oh, I think we gave nearly 90,000 away the last one we did. Um, and then, so just little bits and pieces like that. Jess, since graduating, uh, COVID has happened. Do you think that that has had an impact on, on your capacity to um, take up uh, professional arts? Or, or is that actually not your aspiration? Um, I would absolutely love to do professional arts. Um, I really would because I enjoy it so much and to do it more than just a hobby would be great. But I think with COVID and with the fact that I work in an office, um, I know that job's kind of secure at the moment. Um, and I think obviously if you leave that you, and you try and go into the theatre or the creative industries, it could be a lot harder because of the amount of people that are struggling at the moment already. So when you have looked at professional appointments, you know, temporary ones, not necessarily, you know, full-time job, um, would you be able to tell um, viewers kind of any experiences you've had and how you've overcome any negative um, projections towards your you as a disabled woman? Um, I think I'm quite a stubborn person. So if someone tells me I can't do it, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and I think that's the best kind of mindset to be in. If someone tells you, oh, do you really think you're right for this? Or can you explain to me how um, your body's going to handle that? I mean, obviously you tell them the truth. You know, if there are certain limitations that you can't do, then that's fine. Um, but if someone's just saying, oh, we don't really think you're going to be able to handle the long hours or the long days, then, you know, you, you prove them wrong really um but once you have you've overcome that kind of step I think that's when you kind of get a little bit more respect from the people if you're there for if if, if you had a message to other um disabled people or even anyone else looking to move into kind of drama studying it and then moving into professionally what kind of message would you like to say to them um just that don't give up and if you do get knockbacks as horrible as they are you will meet the right people to support you um and yeah just give it all you can and if you struggle that's okay because you then creative industries are like a family because you have to work so closely together and um, you get to know each other inside out kind of thing so if you have a bad day you've got that support around you. So Jess, thank you so much for um, joining us today. And, and to close, um, and I'd like to leave you to introduce a monologue that you're gonna read for us. Thank you. And um, so this is a monologue from the play, um, A Woman Who Cooks Her Husband, and it's by the character Laura. I don't like being a woman. I don't like it. I don't like being banished to the kitchen at parties, talking about stupid things with stupid females. I want to be where you are. The men all laughing and joking and drinking and smoking. I want to join in. I can't do the things you ask of me. And I'm not like your other wife. I'm not cut out for the household chores. And I cannot stand endless routines. The mindless activities. Who gives a fuck if the doorknobs are polished? Why make the bed? Just sleep in it again. I can't see the point. It just doesn't make sense. Right. You do it if you want to. Hire someone. Hire Hillary. Anything just to get off my back. I do my best for you. 
don't I? It's not like I'm lazy or I'm stupid or incompetent. I starve myself for you. I try and I get my fat bum down and I exercise. I know I'm no great chef, but I do it. And this is the thanks I get. 